Welcome to PH Delicious. I'm your host, Joe, and today in the primordial kitchen, we're cooking up life. I'm hungry already. Let's get started. You can't have life without water. A touch of carbon. Mmm, nitrogen. Just a little salt of the earth. Calcium, strong bones. Just a touch of phosphorus. That's enough. And what about all those trace elements? A little spice of life. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> well, let's mix that all together. Mmm, tangy. We're gonna pour that into a baking dish. Pop that baking dish into a 350 degree oven for about three and a half billion years. And here's one we prepared earlier. That would be pretty cool, but cooking up life is a little more complicated than following a recipe. And living things don't come with nice, convenient ingredients labels like the packages we buy at the store. But what if they did? I don't know, pineapples have three methyl thio pi pi pineapple oate. Those chemicals have strange names, but they're nothing to be afraid of. They're just the stuff of life, the molecules that build us and make us move, store energy and information, even the ones letting you watch and think about this video. And that's not even the whole list. If we add in the nucleic acids, lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, and the minor players like vitamins and cofactors, things like, I I'm not even gonna try that one. Point is, in the recipe for life, the ingredients list for you and me could fill a whole cookbook. But what if we put you in a molecular blender and converted all of your complex chemicals into one human molecule? This is what your chemical formula looked like at birth. Now, in ancient times, scholars believed everything in the universe was made of just four elements. Earth, water, fire, and air. Sorry, Captain Planet. You dirty backstabbing son of a birch. Now today we know it's a little more complicated than that. Living things are made up of cells, cells are made up of molecules, molecules are made up of even smaller atoms. But that old idea turns out to be sort of right. Altogether, 97% of the mass of all living matter is made of just four chemical elements, and you're no exception. An average sized person has 16 kilograms of carbon inside of them, more nitrogen than 400 liters of urine. And converted to gas, you hold enough oxygen to fill the volume of six elephants, enough hydrogen to fill the volume of a blue whale. Add in a few more elements and that's nearly all of what makes up nearly everything. Different organisms tweak the percentages a bit, like how our bones are full of calcium or how plants use boron in their cell walls. But all in all, life seems to work a lot like Taco Bell, crafting an infinite menu from the same handful of ingredients. But this barely scratches the surface of the periodic table. Out of 98 naturally occurring elements, just over 30 of them are known to be essential to some form of life on Earth. Why so few? Because not all elements are created equal. There's a reason we're carbon-based life forms and all of our living chemistry is organic. Now, many creation stories say that life was molded from clay, from the earth itself. Yet our planet actually doesn't contain that much carbon. But there is another element in Earth's crust, a thousand times more abundant than carbon, and which, like carbon, has four outer electrons. It sits just below it on the periodic table. So why aren't we silicon-based? Carbon's special chemistry lets it bond in a variety of different shapes, building on itself and other atoms like nitrogen and sulfur and phosphorus in long chains and branches, everything from DNA to amino acids to sugars to fats. Silicon can't do that. Slap two oxygens on a carbon and you get a gas that plants can eat, but combine two oxygens with silicon and you get sand. Good luck breathing that. We've figured out other ways to put silicon to good use, but it's carbon's variety that led to the variety of life. And right now, there's no reason to believe that life in other parts of the universe would be built on a different backbone. Rather than dirt, early life was born in ancient seas, which is why the hydrogen and oxygen from water dominate our ingredient list. 
When you're born, you're more than 75% liquid, but we all dry out as we get older. Muscle contains more water than fat, our skin is almost two-thirds liquid, even our bones are more than 30% wet stuff. In our body, that water is combined with a mix of ions like potassium, sodium, and chloride, the salts that keep our cells from collapsing and send electrical signals through our nervous system. We're a salty sea, just like the sea that we came from. As we age, changing through the years, our human chemical formula changes with us. Those rare elements at the bottom of our list, like the iron in our blood, the magnesium that surrounds our DNA, cobalt and vitamin B12, copper at work in our mitochondria, well, they're joined by others that don't seem to do anything at all. The average adult contains detectable amounts of 60 elements, mostly just traces of our diet and environment that have built up over time. Remnants of past experiences like heavy metal memories. In fact, if you cut off all your toenails and hair, you could even mine gold. Not much, maybe a tiny nugget no bigger than a grain of salt, worth about a tenth of a cent. But what about the rest of you? If you isolated all the elements that you're made of into their pure form, well, you'd be dead. But if you did this to someone else, the ingredients for one life would fetch around one to two thousand dollars on the open market. Of course, you can't really do that, but it gives us another way to look at life. Everybody's worth something, and thanks to inflation, you'll be even more valuable tomorrow than you are today. You're definitely more interesting than what's on your label. Stay curious. <coughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote that Earth laughs in flowers. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't think it's funny. If you're like me, the coming of spring signals just one thing. Allergies.